to gaze upon his glorious scars. Why is this? Why does Jesus' body in the resurrection still have the wounds that help lead to his untimely and tragic death? Even more, how can the people of God gather together to gaze exultingly at those glorious scars? It all seems a bit bit macabre, which is certainly not a new accusation leveled against the Christian church. It's not hard, after all, to find crucifixes or stained glass or other works of art that depict the bloodied and wounded and crucified and dying Jesus in churches of Lutherans and Catholics and Orthodox alike. With what this hymn suggests, though, is that on the last day, the day when death will finally meet its end, that the faithful people of God will gaze on the glorious scars of Jesus which brought about the most tragic death in history. What can we make of such a strange image, one that comes indeed straight from the uh, passages of Scripture? Well, Jesus' scars serve as an important testimony for God's people. First, they serve as a testimony to Jesus' power and his victory. Our God is a God whose power is made perfect in weakness. Sometimes this power comes in almost comical ways, like in Soviet Romania, where people try to destroy God's word only to find it pop up on toilet paper. But the power of God shows itself in everyday ways, like when a victim forgives his oppressor. God's power always comes to light when, like Mary sings, he has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts, He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. When the powers that be arrested Jesus, they took the one who had already humbled himself by taking on the flesh of a human man and brought him to the lowest point of his humiliation. They mocked him. They struck him and pierced his hands and feet nailing him to the cross. But despite their best efforts, the devil and the world could not destroy Jesus. As John says at the beginning of his gospel, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The marks on Jesus' body, on his resurrected body, then, are signs of his victory over his enemies. The scars on Jesus' body serve also another purpose. They become a sign for all eternity of his ransoming work of mercy. You heard Peter in 1 Peter chapter 2 quote the prophet Isaiah, who said 700 years before Jesus' birth and death, by his wounds we are healed. Jesus' death and resurrection are the climactic moments of God's saving and redemptive work. And God has always had a penchant for signs of salvation. He commanded the people of Israel to put into the Ark of the Covenant, among other things, the manna from heaven, which God had sent to nourish his people while they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Now the one greater than the Ark has come, the one who himself serves as the propitiation for all sins, not through the blood of animals that are sprinkled on the mercy seat, but through his own blood shed on the tree. Even in making things new, Jesus retains the marks on his hands and in his feet as a sign of his ransoming work. So the people of God that are gathered together on the last day are gathered for a victory parade. And as they shout their alleluias, they see the dear tokens of Christ's passion and give to him his due, the endless exaltation to the one who has overcome the devil and the world and death itself. As they welcome the one dressed in glorious majesty, they gaze on the glorious scars of the one who has made them white by his own blood, ransoming them from the power of sin. The scars of Jesus are the story of God's love and salvation, a love that will nevermore cease. 
on them. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We stand for prayer. Hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my cry, keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings, in righteousness I shall see you, when I awake your presence will give me be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life, until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Eternal God, the hours both of day and night are yours, and to you the darkness is no threat. Be present, we pray, with those who labor in these hours of night, especially those who watch and work on behalf of others. Grant them diligence in their watching, faithfulness in their service, courage in danger, and competence in emergencies. Help them to meet the needs of others with confidence and compassion. Abide with us, Lord, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. Abide with us and with your whole church. Abide with us at the end of the day, at the end of our life, at the end of the world. Abide with us with your grace and goodness, with your holy word and sacrament, with your strength and blessing. Abide with us when the night of affliction and temptation comes upon us, the night of fear and despair, the night when death draws near. Abide with us and with all the faithful, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and God sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. For now you let your servant go in 
merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn, which is found on your insert in your bulletin, See My Servant, and it's to the tune that we know from Jesus I Will Ponder Now. Thank you.